Gigi Arnetta on your InfoWars Nightly News this August 7th, 2013. It's a Wednesday night, and boy, do we have a lot of news. Tonight, Homeland Security is criticized over its sexy spy ad. And Obama says the U.S. does not have a domestic spy program. All that and... Come and take it, mother... InfoWars Nightly News. You're failures! And now you want to waddle around the piles of crap you are and tell me how to run my life while you siphon everything off of me. Homeland Security is being criticized for a sexy spy ad. They're doing a campaign right now with a lady holding a cell phone, and it's a bit sexy. It's uh, see something, say something, but we're not sure quite what it is we're looking for. Their campaign has a woman in a low-cut top, prompting jibes that the federal agency is trying to sex up the task of encouraging Americans to spy on each other. Now, their campaigns usually have behaviors that seem routine, such as DHS promotional videos for the See Something, Say Something campaign have portrayed routine behavior as suspicious, including opposing surveillance, paying for a hotel room with cash, using a video camera, talking to police officers, wearing hoodies, driving vans, writing on a piece of paper, and using a cell phone recording application. Obama appeared on the Jay Leno show last night, and he told them that the United States doesn't have a spy program. The president says that the odds of dying in a terrorist attack are a lot lower than they are of dying in a car accident, unfortunately. President Obama has sent John McCain to Cairo to help solve the political problems that uh, brought the Egyptian government to a halt. I got an idea. How about some of the problems that brought our government to a halt? Why don't we start with that one first? Go to there have been times where they slipped back into Cold War thinking and, right. and a Cold War mentality. I had the programs reviewed. We put in some additional safeguards to make sure that there's federal court oversight as well as congressional oversight, that there is no spying on Americans. Oh, and the lying continues. CNN reports a study on mental illness, not combat, causes soldiers suicide. What they're saying is that mental illness, not combat, causes soldiers to commit suicide. Okay, so they're disclaiming PTSD altogether. In this report, it says there's a record number of military suicides seen in recent years that may not be directly due to extended deployments or combat experience, according to a new study. This data analysis, funded by the Department of Defense, suggests that the real reason behind the growing number of military suicides is underlying mental health issues in this population. Well, it sounds like once again, the Department of Defense and the government is denying responsibilities for anything. Now, post-traumatic stress disorder known as PTSD is rampant right now with a lot of our military coming back. And for them to say that these guys have mental disorders before they go into the military is just a lie. But I encourage you to go ahead and read that article in your free time. And it's a good long article and think about it and maybe let your government know that they need to start taking care of our veterans. They're waiting way too long to be taken care of. They're filing claims and they don't hear back soon enough. And that's why we have this many suicides. Kerry says U.S. will sign U.N. treaty on arms regulations despite lawmakers opposition. That piece of <laughs> traitor. You know what I have to say? Come and take it, mother <laughs> Come and get it! Pennsylvanians are asking feds for backup. They're having a little problem. Recently, the police chief of the small town, Chief Mark Kessler, was removed from his post, but his opponents are far from satisfied. Now residents of a sparsely populated former coal town are asking the feds to intervene in fear of an armed revolt. In Gilberton, Pennsylvania, Kessler made international headlines. Last month, he had videos going up, and they exposed the world to a lawman seemingly intent with defending his Second Amendment rights. You can take a look at it and decide yourself. But the town is afraid, and they're asking the feds for help. Be careful what you wish for. Getting government to help you out? Well, the CIA looks a little bit like the mob. David Knight reports. 
Two weeks ago, a key witness in the trial of a mafia boss was found dead. He had said the best revenge is getting on the stand and looking him in the eye. It's going to be a great day. A couple of weeks later, Steve Rakes was dead. The police told the family it was suicide. But there were facts in the case that weren't consistent with suicide. His family said he wasn't suicidal or depressed. His body was found without phone or wallet, and his car was missing. A man with a story to tell about a secretive criminal organization with a history of murder. A man determined to tell that story, regardless of what happened to him. The man dies, and the physical evidence isn't consistent with the conclusion the police immediately jumped to. I'm not talking about the mafia witness now. I'm talking about Michael Hastings, the man who had information about the world's largest and most successful criminal organization, the CIA. The difference in the two stories is that Steve Rake's family and friends pushed back against the official story. They demanded and got an investigation. And after two weeks of investigation, they learned that he was murdered. Although the official story is that the murderer had his own agenda and wasn't working for the mafia boss. That hasn't happened with the Michael Hastings story. His wife, after initially saying she was going to take down whoever had killed Hastings, has now presented the perfect picture of a gleeful Stepford wife. He always had at least five hot stories right. going. That was, that was Michael's. You know, my gut here is that it was just a really tragic accident. What a strange comment and what a strange reversal. But then again, she did work as director of communications for the National Security Council. Hastings' apparent murder under suspicious circumstances while he was covering a story that was going to embarrass the government affects all of us, not just Hastings' wife. This goes to the heart of corruption and crime at the highest level of our government that's manifesting itself in multiple scandals that have roots with both parties over multiple administrations. Hastings' murder is an attempt to intimidate those who would report on the crimes of our government. And while the government may be spinning the story now and stonewalling on information, the truth will eventually come out. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. The Egypt crisis enters tense new phase as mediation collapses. Egypt's army installed government said on Wednesday diplomatic efforts to resolve the political crisis had failed and signaled it was gearing to take action against supporters of deposed President Mohamed Morsi. Gathered at two protest camps in Cairo, the senior U.S. diplomat involved in the mediation effort, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State William Burns, left Egypt on Wednesday, shortly after the government declared the diplomatic efforts had failed. Maybe we could quit sending money to Egypt. In Fort Hood, the suspect that was accused of, quote, workplace violence, has decided to represent himself, but the lawyers won out. The trial has been delayed. Major Nidal Hassan, accused of killing 13 people and wounding 31 others in a 2009 shooting spree, began with a rift between Hassan and his standby counsel that resulted in court being adjourned for the day early on Wednesday. In a motion filed late Tuesday, the team said that they felt that Hassan is trying to purposely get the death penalty and asked the judge not to force them to be a part of that effort. So Osborne said the court will reconvene Thursday morning. This next report might warrant you taking the kids into the other room. We're going to be talking about sex trafficking and our government's involvement in it. The FBI raid that rescued 105 sexually exploited children from a sex trafficking ring last weekend only helped to highlight the vulnerability of foster children. 60% of runaways who are victims of sex trafficking have been in the custody of Child Protective Services. Many times when these children are rescued from sex traffickers, they are put right back into the foster care system. And now with these so-called child protectors snatching up even more kids into the systems so they can collect more money from the feds, there has become a surplus of children and not enough foster homes to take care of them, which means the bar has been set really low for those who can qualify to foster. A 2011 audit of Sacramento foster care facilities found the addresses of more than 1,000 registered sex offenders matched the address of licensed foster care facilities and homes. Almost 600 of those offenders were considered high risk. Sex traffickers typically prey on helpless children who feel abandoned by their families and who are lost in this system of providers that fail to follow up on any reports of neglect. These are the type of children that are really susceptible to grooming for child sex slavery and prostitution. 
The consumers are not who you would expect either. They are doctors, lawyers, business executives, teachers, coaches, and everyone in between. In other words, they don't look evil. Press TV reports rogue elements of police and intelligence services employ child prostitution rings to obtain blackmail material on politicians and other key power brokers. Former CIA Director William Colby told Nebraska State Legislator John DeCamp that a rogue element of the CIA was heavily involved in ritual child abuse. He informed DeCamp that not only were the abused children being used in blackmail projects, but the CIA was also using them to conduct mind control experiments. What became known as the Franklin Scandal was a nationwide pedophile ring that implicated businessmen, senators, major media corporations, the CIA, and the Boys Town organization. The Finders was another notorious CIA-linked child pimping ring. Two men were arrested in 1987 for brutally abusing six children between the ages of three and six. An investigation led police to Washington, D.C. warehouses, where evidence of a global child trafficking network was found, including proof that the children were used in blood rituals and sexual orgies. The investigation was promptly called off when the CIA deemed the Finders case an internal matter. The world is no doubt a better place after the takedown of these 150 low-level sex traffickers, but now the FBI must take their investigation all the way to the top and bring down these elite pedophile organizations that continue to be too powerful for prosecution. To read more about how the government covers up child sex trafficking by the elite, visit the InfoWars store and buy a copy of The Franklin Scandal by Nick Bryant. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and this has been an InfoWars Nightly News Alert. One way the government gets a hold of your children is through CPS. And we're going to be talking with Aram Hampson, who did a film on just that after the break. But for now, we've got the daily quote. The secret of freedom lies in educating people, whereas the secret of tyranny is in keeping them ignorant. That's Maximilian Robespierre. It's time to get active, especially if you're in Austin, Texas. Tomorrow morning, Thursday, August 8th at 10 a.m., you can go speak your mind at the Austin City Hall. They're going to be trying to increase the smart meter system in Austin, a $60 million contract that they'd like to have to make more smart meters happen around the Austin area, which, as you know, is terrible for your health if you've been listening to our shows. And it's, well, it's just not good for anything because it gives the government more abilities to spy on you, connects with all your smart equipment in your home, and if you've heard Alex talk to Laura or Sheila Hemphill, it's incredible what they can do with this. It's always better to be there in person if you can. Speak up at City Hall Thursday, August 8th at 10 a.m. And if you have any questions, you can call Laura, 512-762-3825. And get active, get proactive, and stop the smart meter system from being even more implemented in Austin and in other areas of the United States. That's it for this portion of the Nightly News. Stick around for the interview with Aram Hampson. ProPure is introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is a revolutionary system, and I am so pleased to be able to introduce it to you. This is the Pro One by ProPure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. In the last 20 years, companies have developed technologies that will cut out classical fluoride, sodium fluoride with a secondary filter because sodium fluoride and its derivatives are so incredibly tiny some of it still gets through so you've got to add a secondary fluoride filter onto it which still doesn't cut out some types of fluoride ladies and gentlemen pro pure for two years 
has been quietly developing this with scientists and engineers. It was designed in the U.S. They only have factories that can make this in England. So it's made in England, and this is the only filter that not only cuts out the other bad contaminants and also the fluoride in one step, it cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it, and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the system you need to add to all of the ProPure systems that you've gotten from InfoWarsStore.com. The new Pro One filter element does it all. Water, fluoride, and other heavy metals. This is two-stage filtration in one filter element. To be clear, Pro One water filters designed and created by ProPure are the only gravity-fed filters out there, period, that don't just cut out so-called sodium fluoride, but cut out what is added to most water supply systems, and that is hydrofluorosilicic acid, which is a hopped up energized form of fluoride that is literally dozens of times more deadly to your body. That's what's being added to almost every municipal water supply, not just here in the United States, but in Canada, England, the UK in general, and much of Europe. New Pro One filter elements are good for more than 2,400 gallons, blowing away the competition. The Pro Pure Pro One is a revolution and gravity-fed filters. Take advantage of this today. It's a win-win. Support the InfoWar by purchasing it from InfoWarStore.com. Support the broadcast and get the lowest price out of the gates anywhere. So no matter where you live in the world, it is time to get the latest development in gravity-fed water filtration. Up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. No other filter can cut any of that out. Only ProPure and their new system, Pro One. All available at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. They love the fact that it supercharges the GMOs that you're eating. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. There's nothing more frightening than our government coming in, knocking on your door, and taking your child from you. We have a first-hand account coming from Aram, who is the producer of Uncle Sam's Kid. His first-hand experience with CPS showing up at his door, and his 11-year-old daughter was tasered by the police. She recently had to get a tooth repaired because when she went down on the concrete, it weakened her gum line. So joining me now, we have Aram from Uncle Sam's Kids. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Although it was a, a very informational piece, I found it to be a bit heart-wrenching. Tell us about how this uh, came together. Well, it's a heart-wrenching topic. Um, <clears throat> it was kind of hard to do a documentary on it because there's so many things that you want to cover in something like this, especially if it's a personal experience. And then you're, you know, limited technically by time and by the information you can get. Um, but there's just so many facets of this that I think really do need to be covered. And uh, I was hoping to at least kind of break the ice on this topic so maybe people could become more aware, do some research, that there is this institution in our government that is doing some very wicked things. And it's, it's a... A typical government agency where 
their actions promote themselves in a way to where they destroy families. Now, Aram, why don't we start at the beginning for our viewers that don't know CPS at all, because maybe there's some without children. Explain how you got, how this all came to you, your involvement, and how you had to deal with them so that we can see the motivation of the creation of the film. Okay. All right. Well, when my first child was born, um, he was born about a month premature, um, so he was in the hospital first day, and uh, in the NICU. And the doctors, you know, approached about the regular vaccinations and wanted me to sign off on them. And I said, no way. And I looked through their list of vaccinations, and I especially noticed the hepatitis B vaccination. And I got in this kind of heated discussion with the uh, pediatrician about the hepatitis B vaccination and how absurd it was to vaccinate a newborn child for something that they could basically only get by being either a drug addict or engaging in you know, certain types of activities. <laughs> There's no risk of getting it, none. So why, why did they, what was their argument? Well, the way it works, um, generally from my experience and talking to others, is there's a thing called the mandatory reporting law. Well, basically it's a law here in Oregon, and other states have it as well, that if a doctor sees maybe potential neglect or abuse, they're required by law to report it so then CPS can come and, and investigate. And basically they're assuming, okay, they're going to come talk to the parents and everything's going to be fine and they'll leave. But the problem with CPS is once that system is put underway, well, once they start the case, they get you, you have to do a psychological evaluation. And then they determine that I was mentally ill. And then they make a case report. And then you're required to do uh, whatever the psychiatrist Things you should do, whether it's take medication and go to classes and courses and all that. Wait, uh, what were they? What were they saying you were mentally ill of? Uh, they said I had. They said I had Asperger's and um, that I was narcissistic. And I was because well, we was, could say that about most of the United States government. Right, but I was trying to argue with the uh, <laughs> psychiatrist. I said, "Look, you can't take someone's child and then give them a proper mental health evaluation." You just traumatize the person. They're obviously not going to be in the appropriate mindset to give or to obtain an accurate psychological evaluation. Because by that time, my child was already gone for about a month. Wow. So I was, you know, freaking out. And they have this way of making you seem narcissistic because you, because you want your child back. You're mentally ill because you want your child back. And they tell you that if you were really a good parent, you wouldn't want your kid back because you need to get treatment. And if you don't get treatment, then you're putting your kid at risk. And what treatment were they encouraging? Uh, I, they wanted me to take uh, some SSRI. I don't remember what it was. Um, it was an antidepressant and then uh, another drug for, uh, what else did they say it was? Um, so basically they wanted you to get on pharma. That was their solution. Yeah, they want instead to of tackling this so-called imaginary problem that they created, Depakote. Depakote. Oh, was, there you go. They wanted me on Depakote, and uh, it, I mean, it was the whole thing was just so crazy, and the the whole experience makes you mentally ill. It does. I mean, because it's so insane, you can't understand what's really happening here. I think too, what what a lot of people don't understand is that's where we're headed with Obamacare. Right. That's exactly, it's the same thing. There, somebody who doesn't know you is going to make a determination whenever they feel like it in order to tell you what medication to take because they have actually the power when you, when you really jump into Obamacare. It's interesting. Now, this, this law that you're talking about, this mandatory reporting law, comes down from DHS? It comes from DHS. It's a mandatory uh, child abuse you know, prevention law where certain professionals, everyone from doctors, to teachers, uh, college professors, even uh, college janitors are mandatory reporters where they can get in trouble if they don't report suspected neglect. And the way I looked at it was that it's basically DHS is kind of fishing for kids, but this just creates a big net where they can kind of scoop them up and get a broad base of, of kids to take because they are dependent financially on increasing their caseload so they can get more money. So it creates a definite conflict of interest 
if they're interested, in, is, is, you know, in protecting kids. And there's a, a whole study on kangaroo care, which is about putting the child next to you and raising it next to you and breastfeeding. And the whole thing, there's a reason that God, in, you know, made us this way. So to take that child away is just, it's inhuman. Well, I was like, it's inhuman, but CPS and the makers of the policy know this as a fact. It's in their own literature of studying uh, child development psychology, um, going back to the 50s, that one of the main predictors of antisocial behavior later in life is removal from the primary caregiver. That's called it attachment theory. That was a theory based on the work of Dr. Uh, John Bowlby, um, who did studies with uh, Native American babies. And Aram, I want to hear about your third child. What happened to your third child? Um, we were at the, we had an emergency C-section. Well, actually, it was a planned C-section. Had her in the hospital for about three days and got released from the hospital. And we had our scheduled checkup uh, in like two days. We went there. It, was, it happened to be a Saturday, but the doctor wasn't in. But a nurse practitioner saw our baby. Everything was fine. Everything was great. They scheduled us again to come back on Sunday. Well, I called and canceled the appointment because I thought it was absurd that we had to drive another 30 miles with a little newborn baby. I'm not fond of driving a little precious little baby in a car. So I said, like, no, nah, let's cancel that appointment. Well, the doctor, under this mandatory reporting law, reported us for potential neglect because we canceled one appointment. On Monday morning, two caseworkers and two armed police officers showed up at our house needing to verify that our baby was okay. We said, okay, here's the baby. She's fine. She was nursing and doing great. Well, they come in and wanted to talk to us, of course, and I'd already had experience with this, so I'm like, oh, man, this is not good. Um, and they spoke with us for a little while, and the caseworker, you could just see the look on her face looking at our baby. It's like that she wanted our child. Um, so she determined that our child had to be removed, and my wife had never had any experience with DHS. And uh, she was like, no way, you're not taking my kid. The two police officers start going in to forcefully take our newborn baby away from her. It starts to get uh, into a nasty situation. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And I knew what was going to happen. If my wife starts fighting with two cops and the baby gets hurt, we're going to get charged with it. We'll probably never see her again. Um, so I was just like, man, we didn't have any choice. We had to let him take her. Otherwise, you take the chance of getting assault on a police officer, endangerment, all kinds of nasty things. How did you get her back? It took ten and a half months. You just had to, you just had to cooperate with everything they say to do. Go to treatment for mental health reasons. Uh, abide by all the doctors' uh, prescribed treatments, whether it's you know vaccinating. Show up for all your appointments. And they finally gave her back. But she was switched around three different times when she was a child. And DHS knows that is one of the most damaging things to do to a newborn and a parent. So, so that I understand it a little clearer, too, you say DHS and CPS are all part of the same agency? Yeah, it's called DHS in Oregon, Department of Human Services. Oh, Human Services. Okay, all right. Interesting. Well, give us your website again and how people can reach you, because I'm sure there's going to be viewers with questions for you. Okay, um, you can go to GMO Free Jackson County on Facebook or Mothers Against GMOs on Facebook. All right, great. And thank you so much for sharing with us, Aram. Thank you so much. And great job on the film. Appreciate it. All right. To find out more about his film and the other films that are in the Paul Revere contest, go to Infowars.com slash Paul Revere. And his film is called Uncle Sam's Kids. Go and check that out. It's educational. It'll teach you a lot about CPS, first-hand account. And if you want to learn more about child trafficking in the United States, we have a book at InfoWarsStore.com, The Franklin Scandal, A Story of Power Brokers, Child Abuse and Betrayal by Nick Bryant. Go to the website today and read more about what's really happening in the United States and our corrupt government. I'm G. Gironetta, and join us tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, for the InfoWars Nightly News. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. 
You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com show.